because you're going to give a phase pick over. Mm -hmm. uh, so I quite like it. You're going to see things like potentially Narbash come back in, Mira potentially come back in. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Bronze Army just banned out phase to stop that getting through. Yeah, we also might see that Richter come through uh, with Decker and FaZe being the strongest supports in the game, with Narbash being that close, uh, the close second and third. Um, it be interesting to see who they pick up, because there's not a lot. The support pool in this game isn't super deep right now. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see who they will pick up as a support. We might see something fun. Who knows? Might and be there is a the FaZe, man. Oh, there as there I mentioned. Look, they look can't at risk gems, with that clair gems with the clairvoyance, guys. I mean, they can't really leave it up because then Black Knights get an easy first pick. Which is Chimera. Phase and... I mean, Chimera is... I I've been loving Chimera. A lot of people have been calling me the Chimera one trick right now. Oh, it's I'm, so lucky. I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. Uh... But with FaZe being banned, he loses a lot of his efficiency. Yeah. Um, you kind of need the FaZe to give you that sort of late game edge that you, you need that he hasn't got. And Bronze Army also quickly insta-pick their two picks on Fa Revenant and Morgesh, strong carry, strong off laner slash mid laner, depending where you want to play the Morgesh, most likely in the off lane. But again, solid picks on both sides. My main issue would have been Chimera without a phase is slightly suboptimal, but if he can get far ahead in the early stages, mm -hmm. uh, then it won't be too much of a problem. And I like how the Black Knights are picking up their support right off the bat. They go for the Narbash because Decker's banned. Narbash is the best is, is the second best bet uh, to get a Decker like experience with a little bit of healing in there. Um, they're gonna follow that pick up with a Howitzer as their second pick. Now we have Bronze Army. Fifteen seconds left to make their counter picks. Kind of curious. Who do you think's gonna come out of this one? I mean, Bronze Army have been playing pretty well. Um, throughout the tournament, it's it's looking a little bit more in, in favor of Bronze Army. Depend if we're just looking at the picks right now, uh, Revenant and Morgesh, extremely strong heroes. Revenant can get away from the Chimera as well, um, using that ultimate to go to the Nether Realm. He can escape sort of Chimera if he times it correctly. However, uh, Narbash plus Howitzer is also pretty deadly. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the Crash Bang uh, boom just there, along with the Make It Rain. You can't, you can't do anything about it unless you can sort of try and cancel out the Narbash ultimate. But the only way they can do that right now is with that Grux smash and grab or the Warlords challenge. That's it. That's all they have. Those is, Grux right now is the only thing that can stop Narbash from getting a complete ultimate go. That is actually true. There's no hard CC on their team aside from the Grux. Um, to counter pick the last two picks for the Black Knights are coming up right now. Uh, I'm just kind of curious in that Chimera pick because phase is banned and Chimera really needs that phase. Um, they had first pick jungle and I think they did a really good job of prioritizing their support uh, as well. They're going to go for a Murdoch. Interesting. Well, uh, the reason you could, you go for Murdoch in this composition is purely because you have something like a Chimera. Uh, Chimera with the Cull, can, and then you can time that up and with an Aurora. Aurora for, ooh! Big AoE comp coming out here. But again, yeah, the main the reason you do it is long arm of the law, long range. With Chimera Cull, you can secure kills incredibly easily. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, high damage, single target burst across the map. Um, Chimera can help Murdoch get fed and be on the opposite side of the map. And there we are getting a little bit of CC back out of the bronze army with Lieutenant Bellica being the pick for the mid lane. That's going to be taboo on that one. Um, no, I, I think that's a Bellica support with a Morgesh mid. Um, it's a Bellica actually, support, yeah, no, Morgesh mid with Greystone right. in the off lane. You, you definitely are right on that one. Gems, the man with the plan. He knows all the good tricks. He's. I, I'm just. I'm just here to look pretty. He's. He's the one with all the information. You know. He's got like. A, he's. He's got me on Discord. You know. Sliding them DMs. Say this. <laughs> say this. This is the good stuff. I don't know anything. <laughs> so, in terms of like the teams, who do you reckon is actually going to come out on top with these compositions that you're seeing as well, Jack? Based off composition alone, I really, really like uh, the Black Knights. They are my composition choice uh, for this time. Um, my buddy Adam Antle is on their team, so I need to give him, you know, a little bit of credit. I need to give him some uh, some some props. I want to see him perform because I haven't seen him play. I, I've played with him a couple times, um, but I haven't seen him play jungle and Chimera. That's a feast or famine champion right there. So if you fall behind, you're gonna have a rough day. He's against. Well, <laughs> 
I'm thinking just purely from a sort of skill point. We see Bronze Army. We know a lot of them uh, with Nibori, with Kenki Trashcan. They're strong players. Um, we've seen them play with popular streamers. You see them play all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that even though their comp might not be ideal, if they have they have such high single target as well with Morgesh Revenant, um, with the Hive, with the Obliterate, they couldn't get through one of these targets incredibly quickly. The mm -hmm. one thing we'll be, we have to keep track of is if they have Purity Sensor available, or if anyone's going to actually grab a Purity Sensor on their team to deal with this composition coming out from the Black Knights. The only person who could really do that would be Bellica. Oh, uh, Greystone could as well. But I yeah, wouldn't yeah. put a Purity Sensor on a Greystone. Yeah, it's, we're going to have to pay attention to see when and if they get it. Uh, Bellica or the support grabbing that is going to be a, a little bit rough in terms of overall damage output, but Again, not too much of an issue. You take her for the drone, you take her for the knock-up, and the ultimate still does a lot, even if you're not building full power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so both both teams have their own picks. Uh, we're seeing the Bronze Army, like you said, with a very uh, pick-oriented team comp. Individual focus, a lot of burst. <clears throat> Whereas we see uh, the Black Knights all around, I, I feel like it's an all around more comfortable team comp for a lot of people. Um, they have the Chimera to, Wom to Wombo combo into the Murdoch ultimate. Aurora, Narbash, Howitzer right there. You get caught in one of those ults, it's gonna hurt. You get caught in all three of those ults, that's a team wipe. Yeah, it is. I know you're ready to hop into this first game of the day as well, Jack. Yeah, I am pretty much ready to go. So in three, two, one, and go. We are now underway with the very first game of round two, boys. We are in it to cast it. <laughs> to introduce my friends over at the Bronze Army. We are going to have Nobori on the Bellica support. Taboo in the mid lane. He's going to be Morgash. Me so sneaky. Everyone's favorite hero race streamer is going to be the Master Revenant. First one to get Master Revenant. And Joshua on the Greystone now walking into the enemy jungle, looking to get a nice deep ward down. <clears throat> They're not going to punish him for it either. Cranky trash can in the jungle on Grux. His uh, and, favorite here. And on, the, and on the side of the Black Knights, we have Adamental on the Chimera, Letit Mello on the Aurora, Mephilis on the Narbash, Nar Mile High on the Howitzer, and Afrex on that Murdoch. And right off the bat, you're talking about the wards. We already saw one of the deep wards that Greystone plays get removed. So that's one less ward to cover the mm -hmm. jungle entrances here on the side of the Bronze Army, uh, which means it, they might have a little bit of a more difficult start. But is this this is looking to be sort of an interesting start. Afrix on the Murdochs is a bit late to his lane, uh, which gives Joshua here a lot of free time to get these white camps. I would have liked to have seen maybe Joshua go into the lane, try to stop the the setting of it so that mm -hmm. it doesn't push and he gets zoned away but hopefully it looks like it's still going to be pushing in his favor it's kind of interesting when you see that especially um since you don't see in competitive matches especially late starts like that can actually impact you he's already missed a couple cs you know at the start and uh carries you want every bit of cp you can grab every every last hit makes a difference um and that does give graystone the advantage there Kind of curious to see on that one. Uh, junglers right now rotating through their boss. We see Cranky Trashcan actually ahead of uh, Adam Mantle, who's still in his other camp. He went well, for the Oasis. He went for the Oasis siphon by the looks of it instead of um, a B siphon. So he just has nothing but health regen. So he's sustained, but he's not clearing fast at all. He, he, he's going to be full health. He went for the slower clear, which means that he's going to have that green at the three minute mark or just after it because he's gone to the oasis um whereas you're gonna see cranky, uh, cranky trash can already he's lost his green however he's hit level three 15 seconds before mm -hmm. these uh, buffs are spawned which allows him to now rotate over on to adamantil's side of the buff and go for a fight there it's kind of interesting how he decided to go straight across the mid lane instead of trying to be more hidden and now it looks like he's being jumped on because of that they knew where he was he's gonna have to back off rotate back over to his side of the map and uh, see if he can secure that black buff adamantil securing the red on the right side of the map and he's rotating over he's looking a little thirsty 
He's gonna jump straight onto Cranky Trash Can. He's using Smash and Grab to pull him in. There's the rocket coming out of the house. They're a little damage off. Adam Mental now in a weird spot. He's being chased down by the Moragesh completely. There is the mile. There's mile high bringing in the landmine to knock him closer to the tower, but all he did was knock Taboo closer to his target, and he's going to use the mark to pick up the very first kill of the game onto the Chimera. Black buff on Morigesh. That is why you don't want to fight her with the hive, with the constant poke of those basic attacks. Dots for days! You couldn't, you couldn't really do anything about it. He wasn't able to reach any. He was in a ball position where he couldn't hit them. Uh, consistently to get that regen going. He also didn't have his ambush available to him to quickly get damage upon them. He only had the jump and the regen as well, which meant that he really didn't have much in terms of resources that actually secure a kill there. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the mid lane, we are seeing Taboo go back into lane right now. He's only level three, Mile High now at level four. Uh, looking at first build, oh, we may see a gank coming in, coming into the right lane. Cranky Trash Can positioning himself to go in onto that Narbash who walks straight up to Joshua. He's going to use the speed boost to try and get out, but Cranky Trash Can dashing in, deading the smash and grab, followed up by the double pain to secure his own kill on the game. Really nice, clean <clears throat> gank from Cranky Trash Can. Um, I really liked how Graceland started the fight beforehand, sort of baiting the Narbash into an oh. engagement that favorable and now we have video. adamental jumping in on to miso sneaky using that ambush to burn down the health bar of the revenant however revenant very very equipped to handle the situation nabori getting a good knock up let it mellow was not actually around to help uh, adamental get back onto the fight so he had, he decided to just not follow up on that one even though he had the complete capability to stick to the target and I think if he did, they probably could have gotten the kill on the Revenant. Potentially, but um, it's it's one of those things where the minion wave is something to keep track of. It can make things incredibly difficult, especially the early couple of levels where you take so much damage from minion waves. And I'm liking what Cranky Trash Ground was trying to achieve. <clears throat> he was looking for a potential invade here on Ad Adamental, but wasn't able to grab it. Um, the green buff Adamental hadn't actually finished taking it earlier, so it hasn't respawned again. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see him just take the white camps, what was left on that. Which is actually going to slow him down quite a bit. As we see, Cranky Trash Can is going to be able to get his second green of the game already. Yeah. Um, whereas there's only been one green on the side of, hit, of the, the Black Knight here. So yeah, we're already um, six minutes into the game. We're looking at Adamental at level 3, 16 CS. Cranky Trash Can level 4 with 21. A kill and an assist. So Cranky's sitting pretty in comparison to uh, his jungle counterpart on the other team. Now, I I'm going to talk about builds, and I'm, I'm actually quite liking Maha's build. As ridiculous as it looks, <laughs> as ridiculous as it looks, it makes a lot of sense, especially against the Moragash. Just to handle with the Hive, uh, you just sit there with a bunch of healer tokens. You can pretty much regen out the a lot of the damage of the Hive mm -hmm. if you manage to stall out long enough. Mile High using the... Oh, Adamental jumping in onto Taboo after Mile High gets the landmine. He's not going to choose to pursue that any further as that has not worked in his favor the past few times around. We do have Riverbus spawning in 10 seconds. Jungler deciding to gank the left lane instead of prioritizing the river buff. Um, Cranky Trash Can on the left side of the map. We do have Adamental running in. There is Let It Mellow with the big ultimate. But it doesn't seem to register... Did Nabori? No, Nabori can't get the purity sensor off already. No, he, he, there's no purity. I think it, it just it missed. might have just missed. I think it just missed. Um, the, I'm not 100 percent sure if it was maybe the knockout from Nabori cancelling it. Very good. That could well be it. Taboo picking up a kill in the mid lane on two mile high. Now we have the Narbash over there. Nice clap coming out of it on the Warlord's challenge. Smash and grab will not land. Hive will, so a little bit of dot damage being done to the Narbash, but no one is there to really follow up on that one, as they don't have a lot of health or mana, and they're going to have to back. Yeah, remember when I was talking about Chimera's main weaknesses? Uh, especially without a phase, the late game becomes a lot rougher. Mm -hmm. um, kind of needs to get ahead early in these couple st early stages of the game. Elemental hasn't actually been able to get any successful ganks as of yet. He's sitting at 8 points, whereas Cranky Trash can got a few successful ganks sitting at 11. He's already got a three-point deficit here on the board, which is actually going to make it a little bit rough for him to get a future ganks successful. going in. Let it mellow, trying to get an ultimate off on Miso Sneaky, and he does. They're going to change targets onto the Revenant. 
There's a split focus coming out of the Black Knights, which really hurt that gank over there. And now Adamantil could be in a lot of trouble as he's getting hit by the Obliterate and the Void Bomb. Nabori's going to be one to pick up the kill on that one. Let it mellow had no health following up on the ultimate. Very Maybe a lack of communication. I, yeah. I feel like that is the case because we are seeing Adamantil try and try. He's trying to make plays. His team is not there to follow up with him. Um... So it, well, it it looked like it wasn't a fight he could actually win against Mr. Sticky. He's, Mr. Sticky already has a pretty significant lead in card power. Uh, the Obliterate is starting now to do a lot of damage. He's got a few points into it. And again, we already saw the, the crisis stasis. I mean, only hit one. Nibori was still ever mm -hmm. able to consistently put out damage. And we have Craig and Trash Camp picking up a kill for himself. Oh, my hawk coming back. Lands a landmine trying to protect the Narbash. Joshua has ultimate. And he's trying to get that kill. Taboo runs in now. He's going to pick that one up. Mile high in a lot of trouble as now he gets hit by the Greystone ultimate. Greystone just wailing away. Still under tower for like 60 seconds. Tanking that thing. He's going to pick up a kill for himself onto mile high. So far, the bronze army is definitely showing that they are stronger than steel. And they're able to uh, pick up their kill. Score in the game now. Seven to zero in favor of the Bronze Army. <clears throat> a really strong start for the Bronze Army. Um, Taboo, three and no in that mid lane, looking incredibly well here. Has managed to get a big enough lead to the point that Mile High can't really do much right now. Even all that regen that he hit earlier is. He's, he's sold it away now, and he's expected to go for some more power. But that means that. <laughs> Mile High can now just take fights freely in this mid lane, mm -hmm. and all that damage will stick. Yeah. Definitely is the case. Um, <clears throat> starting on now, we do have Black Buff on the right side of the map. Surprised no one's rotated over to grab that one yet. Not even a war dot, so they aren't aware. But it's the Raptors that are being taken by the Bronze Army, who are completely starting to get ahead with this game and completely exert their dominance. Mile High trying to land <clears throat> a landmine. It will miss. Team's gonna try and dive in, but he does recognize they are there and he's gonna back off into the safe zone of his tower at the very back of it. They're gonna dissipate, run back on the right side of the map. We are seeing Narbash and Murdoch rotate in. They pick up the black buff. They're looking, I think, at Taboo. Thunk's gonna get thrown out. It does land. There is no crash bang boom as Narbash is only level three. However, Murdoch was not there to follow up on the gank for it from his support. And that's going to cost Mephilus his life. He goes down. Again, it's one of those things. Uh, we see Murdoch sit around waiting <clears throat> oh, for that rib up. He's going to get punished now for sitting in that lane as well. Looks like he's going to fall as well. And it looks like Elemental, will he get the return here? He does finally pick up the first kill of the game for the Black Knights. Crank Trash Gang going down to mile high after the cryo seism gets landed. On to Cranky Trash Can, and my game is so bugged right now. Give me a second, guys. I'm just gonna fix up a couple things here. Uh, Gems, if you could take this away just for a quick second while I get uh, my frame rate sorted out. Okay, so while, while you guys are watching Jack's slightly off putting frame rate issues, uh, at the moment we already still see the two kills that we saw the Black Army get in that last fight. However, they did lose a Frick on 0-2 on Murdoch. He's already got a six point deficit against Mr. Sneaky. He's sitting at 20 points on this Revenant. That is not a 1v1 fight that's ever going to be in favor right now <laughs> for the foreseeable future, to be honest. Unless, unless the Bronze Army make a really big mistake and give up a, a big objective of trying to go so for an aggressive tower dive that doesn't pan out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Sneaky is going to be dominating the, the majority of these fights. Um, <clears throat> we are seeing Taboo poke down. Look at that one point of uh, the, the damage that Hive is doing right now to that Murdoch. The one mark with the Hive has brought him down to almost half health. And that's going to be a good indication of how big Taboo's damage is going to be coming out in the next team fight. When Taboo wants to hit that target, he's going to be able to just blow him up. 13 minutes now, we are seeing Riverbus spawn. Four people on the left side are secure that red buff. Blue buff for the Chimera. The Taboo's right around the corner. They're trying to clear out each other's wards. 
Adamental gets one, Taboo gets the other. Now seeing an ARAM kind of break out. As the Black Knights are grouping flat mid. A lot of side farm being completely wasted right now um, for the Black Knights. I think they're just trying to keep their tower up in the mid lane and not lose too much else. However, they're losing a lot of farm and we are seeing Bronze Army continue farm up, continue doing what they need to do. That's going to cost the Black Knights within the next five minutes or so. Yeah, it's really going to put them far behind. If we're just looking at farm, there's <clears throat> about an 80 point farm difference right now between the two teams, 30 minutes into the game, that is a good couple of points of CXP difference per player. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see it on the board as well. Uh, Crunchy Crash Grand's 20 points, whereas we see Adam Mental's only at 14. And same of, thing oh, Cranky could be in a little trouble. There's a Crash Bang Boom and the Cull coming out of the Chimera as they're beginning to chase down the Grux. He jumps right back on him. And now we are seeing Adam Spin in a circle and go the other way. As his Greystone, he's going to change his focus to. Interesting choice. Taboo rotating it now to try and help out. Thunk coming out of Narbash onto Josh, who is going to use the speed boost to get away. Let it mellow. Goes for the Cryoseism onto Cranky, hitting the one target. There is the clap coming out of Cranky Trash Can using the Warlord's Challenge, followed by the Make It Rain. Murdoch getting the long of the law onto the Grux. Will not do enough damage. Nabori. Picking the kill on to Narbash, and we have Taboo speed boosting himself into the team. He's looking to pick up that kill. The Hive will land. Mile High could very well go down if those healer tokens aren't able to stick. And there's the mark through the wall. He picks up his own kill. That's a double kill for Taboo. And one for the support. Three for nothing trade in favor of the Bronze Army once again. Score now 12 to 2. Taboo on that Morugesh is putting in some hella work right there. <clears throat> Six and one, that hive hitting so many people mm -hmm. consistently along with the mark uh, being used just to, put, to take all those kills. And 15 minutes into this game, Brot's Army are gonna secure what looks to be the first prime of the match. And it doesn't look like Black Knights are gonna be able to do anything about it at all. Adam until running in now. He could be in a bad spot. Taboo sees him. He's looking to chase him down as that regen from OP is beginning to kick in and give the health and mana of the Bronze Army back. Getting ready for a nice big siege onto the tier two in the mid lane. Taboo's already way ahead. Getting ready to go in there and face and <clears throat> front line for the team. Great trash can now at full health. He's going on to, oh my God, that tower damage is insane. They're not going to do anything. Cranky Trash Can now diving in. Miso Sneaky taking the tower damage. No one following up, deciding to do anything. There's Adamental making the first move, but Warlord's Challenge stops the call completely. Crash Bang Boom going out, managed to land on to the Revenant. But Narbash goes down as well as the jungler for the Bronze Army. Miso Sneaky now in a little bit of trouble. He has no health. He's going to back off. Murdoch trying to pick up the kill on his own. He's going to back off as he realizes his team is not there to follow up. They're now looking to push down the rest of that tower. T2 should be going down as that Prime is now regening the entire team that is still alive for the Bronze Army. Tower is going down. Mile High, the only one there. He's going to burn the ultimate a little high in the air as he obliterate chunks him completely. All we need is Taboo there for the mark and he gets it. They're going to continue. Well, they, they decide to back out here and not go for this inhibitor, even though they still have the prime buff. Instead, they elect to go back, take the raptors, and secure themselves a more CXP lead rather than essentially funneling more creeps down this middle lane, um, potentially giving them. That's the one thing. Like the mid lane inhibitor, I've been talking about this quite a bit. Mid lane inhibitor is one of the quickest ones to get to the core. However, this early into the game, uh, if you just take it, all that's going to do is funnel a source of income directly down the mid lane to the Black Knights that they can then farm up uh, on one of their carries consistently and then push out whenever an objective needs to be fought over. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not the worst decision to go back, take the Raptors, guarantee that CXP, and then you can go for sort of a winning push at the next prime when it shows up in the next sort of five minutes. Score now, 15 to 3. We are seeing the Bronze Army 140 CS ahead of the Black Knights. We see Taboo at 29 card points, Miso Sneaky at 35. Meanwhile, the mid laner for the Black Knights, 18. 
So Tabu's not 10 points. He's 11 points ahead of the enemy mid laner right now. Yeah, he's, he's insanely ahead. 7, 1, and 3. He's been involved in over... In about, in about two-thirds of the kills in the game. Uh, 66% of the kills. Heavily involved in a lot of the fights and kind of been why they've been winning. And mm -hmm. the combination of Taboo and Cranky Trash Can has been going incredibly well here for the front end. They are looking to flex into the jungle right now. Cranky Trash Can does have purple and they are aware he's there. The purple's not running out. They're looking to regroup back into the mid lane. I think they could have taken that inhibitor when they had the chance and doing so would have really secured their lead. They would have been able to then fall back onto Raptors. Instead, they elected for the Raptors. Now they're stuck in this weird no man's land where they have the advantage, but a throw could really throw that advantage and make the game back to more even and more of an even playing field. Cranky Trash Game with the blue buff right around the corner of Adamantle. They know each other are there. He's looking, <laughs> the, the random thunk just BMing Cranky. As they now jump onto that Amber Link. I really like what they're doing right now. You can see the Bronze Army essentially biding their time for the next set of resources, major resources to come mm -hmm. up. Um, wait for the next Raptor or the next Prime to show up. And in the meanwhile, they're going to take control of this jungle. They're going to mm -hmm. make sure that the Black Army have pretty much nothing in terms of power available to them. They're not going to be leveling up much. And the Bronze Army are going to get consistent minions and farm and just keep increasing the state slowly while they bide their time to take the next prime or the next raptors and force a nice fight away from these inhibitors it's actually hilarious we're seeing cranky trash can right beside the enemy team and they're scared to go in on him they don't know what to do he's standing right but he's literally right there they could punish Black Knights could punish the Bronze Army so hard right here and just nothing is happening instead we have the dash in and the smash and grab Cryo and will land onto Cranky Trash Can. He will not be able to get his kill, but that does take him out of the fight. He's now tower, taking tower damage. There's Adamantle diving in now, goes for the call, does a little bit of damage. Miso Sneaky blowing up. Adamantle with the obliterate. However, he does get the kill onto the Grux. So a nice little pickup for the Chimera who desperately needs it. Now Miso Sneaky going in. What, I don't know what, I just got a bug. Narbash disappeared and died, and the Obliterate went everywhere. But okay. So Narbash dies to me so sneaky by the looks of it. This is now a uh, power play. 4-3 power play for the Bronze Army, who are now in the left lane. Joshua just casual Greystone things, 2 v one the enemy team. Um, we are in the right left lane now. We do see Nabori and Miso Sneaky dealing that tower damage. Trying to get that another tier two down. They've been at the front line this entire time, Gems. Basically on a two one two split. Trying to push up, just getting free farm, and nothing's happened. Every time well, Black Knights go seen, in, they lose. We haven't seen the Black Knights fully commit five to one side. Um because they can't really fight the two v twos or the three v twos. They're actually so far behind, even a three v two would go against them. Um you can't really go on Mr. Sneaky because he can just go hop into the Nether Realm and then you, you lost your main target to hit mm -hmm. on, and he takes out one of them and makes it an instant 2v2 fight. Um, you can't really go on to Morgesh because she can just run away and join the rest of her team, and you have to overcommit. So they've been put in this really awkward position where they haven't really got all of nothing. They're not willing to give up any of their inhibitors. Uh, so they fought, they're following this game plan here that we've been seeing here from the Black Knights, and you can see Mahai is <laughs> probably going to fall here to, to the boo. This is a lot of damage coming out here from Morgesh. And Mile High, oh, the one more tick, and you are right, Gems, he does go down. Hive damage completely, completely devastating to the enemy team right now, as Taboo has the card points and the levels to just chip away the health of the enemy team. Is he, uh, he's got his Tainted Magic, right? He is rocking that Tainted Magic, so that's gonna hurt even more. That's 12 seconds of 2% health, uh, 2% health damage, followed yeah. by another 6 after that. On top of that, this is the point I was talking about. We saw Raptors come up, they're going to take Raptors, they're going to secure those points. They're probably going to go back and spend this lead they've accumulated. We can only see Mr. Sneaky sitting on 11 points unspent. Oh my god. He was doing a lot of damage before. He's dub more than double ahead of the Black Knights here right now. Seeing at 47, the next closest on the Black Knights is only 24 on that Murdoch. And that is incredibly 
painful. This is looking really grim here for the Black Knights. It turns out bronze is stronger than steel. <laughs> they are going to secure that orb prime. No one is there to even contest it. Adam knows they're around. You can see that Adam Mental wants to make plays. His team, consistent through the game, has been very afraid to follow up on the Chimera, which you cannot do, because that puts Chimera in a bad situation. And all you're really game doing is done. just letting your Chimera go in. You're letting him feed, and you're putting the Chimera who can't fall behind, behind. As a team effort. Now, they've gone back, they've spent all their points, and they have Prime. This is like looking at an ideal setup here for the Bronze Army to end this game right now. Um, this is the point in the, in the game where they try to look for a, an end game fight around one of these inhibitors and then try and push for the win. Mm -hmm. They've got such a commanding lead that they've consistently been taking all the resources perfectly. The fights around the buffs or the jungle have always gone in their favor. And now they're <laughs> gonna use that to push down this mid lane, probably set up the other two lanes so that any off chance of them losing a few towers is gonna get removed. You can already see Joshua gonna start this push, set it up as this Grayson because he could sit there. They have to send at least two to three people just to deal with him. All right. And we are seeing a 1-3-1 one, one split as they are sitting in the ways. Greystone now grouping into the mid lane. Cranky Trash Can will be doing the same as well. This could be very bad news for the Black Knight as a very primed up bronze army is looking to take down that inhibitor and the game. If they aren't able to defend this inhibitor, if anyone goes down for the Black Knights, that's the end of this. That could very well spell the end of the game. We are seeing the very first minion wave crash into the inhibitor. Joshua doing a great job of zoning out the enemy team, going on to Adamantal. Miko Siki with the Obliterate 100 to zeroing the Chimera. Cryo says and will land, but Miko Siki picking another kill as the Make It Rain will hit for two. R2000 Rocket. Also hitting for two. Miso Sneaky right there, picking up the kill once again. That's a triple kill for the Revenant. Give him the quadrant. No, Nabori takes the kill with the Neural Disruptor. And Taboo picking up the fifth. That is a full ace for the Bronze Army. And they're now looking to take down all three inhibitors. There's the second. No, they're gonna go on. And they realize this is the end of the game. They're going to get that core. As they chunk it down, Adam Mental's right there. He knows that's it. He's going to try and run in just for a little bit, but it won't be enough. Timera can't stop a five-man prime push. That's the end of the game. 26 minutes. Going to the Bronze Army. Final score, 23-4. to four. Really, really strong game from the Bronze Army. Um, <laughs> it's not much to really analyze in terms of what happened. Um, they were allowed to get the first early couple of kills with Cranky Trash Can, um, doing incredibly well in the early stages as Grux were able to take to shut down Adamental in the early stages, not allow that Chimera to get ahead and do Chimera things and just keep piling on sort of armor with damage. Uh, in the early stages, where he becomes incredibly huge nuisance, and from there on in, without Adamental being sort of a force in the side of the Black Knights, mm -hmm. it made it incredibly difficult for them to actually achieve anything. They, their ganks were suboptimal. Um, it looked like they were lacking a little bit of communication, some of them, where one person would go in, the other person wouldn't follow up sort of ganks. Uh, minion waves not in the right position during those ganks, and they ended up getting heavily punished for those as well. And but I have to say congratulations to all of them. They've got, I think this is their first game of the day as well, so it's a great start for them. Um, they're probably going to be 1-0 up in their group. Um, we'll, Probably to catch up later to see if they make it through or not. Um, but for now, they're 1 0, and that's our first game of the day. Yeah, and we're going to take a quick break to get everything else set up. Next game coming up Oxygen Esports versus Eventual Demise. I don't even just say, I'm going to say it, but I don't need to. Will they meet their eventual demise? Will it be quick? Or will they be able to actually stop Oxygen Esports, one of the strongest teams in Paragon right now? We'll find that out in just a second. I am Geronimo Jack. This is the man with the hairline that everyone loves. It's Gems. And we'll be back for game two of round two of the NA qualifiers brought to you by the PCL in just a second.